Thank you for watching. Today I'm with Cyrus Washington, veteran of 114 professional fights, two-time Lethway world champion, and the first foreigner to defeat uh, an opponent in Asia, in Myanmar. And as well as that, Cyrus is also a multi-time Muay Thai world champion as well. And we're going to be having a chat about his life, his career, and his amazing life story today. So, um, Cyrus, like I said before, thank you for taking the time to, to have a chat with me today. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that yeah, very thank much. You. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Liam. Uh, that's all right. Honestly, pleasure's all mine. I know, uh, I know we're both, you know, we're both very busy, so I'm glad we've been able to um, make it fit, to be honest. I'm, I'm, you know, grateful for that. So, um, starting at the beginning, um, like uh, a bit like before, um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually start a little bit differently. Um, You've obviously fought all over the world. Uh, you know, you fought in, in uh, many, many different locations, um, you know, all over the world. Out of those, um, where would you say is uh, the best sort of location that you've fought in or your personal favorite? Um, I mean, I like most of the places. There was no place that I didn't like. But um, the place where the people made the, the environment a lot better and just had a good ambience was uh, Uzbekistan for me, you know. Um, the people, they always smiled, you know, and, and people smile a lot in Thailand as well and other places. But um, people were just very kind, you know, very kind. And, and that made that uh, experience both times. It made that experience uh very pleasant, you know. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And uh, in a minute, I'd like to um, I'd like to get to the the left way aspect of things. But before we do, uh, like touching on the Muay Thai side of things and the kickboxing and, and everything like that. Obviously, multi-time um, you know world champion in uh, in that discipline or in those disciplines. Um, winning a world title, um, you know, in something like that is. I'm sure it's something that you have to experience to, you know, to fully appreciate it. But for the people watching this, what is it like to sort of, um, you know, reach the, the top of the mountain like that uh, in terms of, um, you know, achieving something as big as that? What, what does it, what does it feel like? What is the experience like? Uh, for me personally, once I got to, 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 to the highest level, um, it was just motivating, motivating to do more. You know, it motivated me to do more, to push harder. And not only as a fighter or, or athlete, but, but as a person as well. You know, I know that there were, at one point in time, there was a lot of people that kind of looked at me and kind of followed what I said and what I did. And um, I wanted to make sure I displayed the right thing, you know, as best I could anyway. Okay. So, yeah, that does lead me to another thing. I mean, um, funny enough, that's something I was – going to mention to you later on but we'll we talk about it now is that obviously you know you're a role model to a lot of people you know you've got like uh, obviously a big following uh, big audiences with fights and things like that I mean if you or what I'm trying to ask is how do you actually see yourself uh, as a role model as, a, as an influencer to people um, what sort of what does that mean to you and what do you try to um, convey to your fans if that makes sense I know it's a strange question but uh, what does that side of things mean to you, really? Um, well, the, the main thing, um, I do my best to embody and, and show other people to do is to just um, be patient, be kind, uh, be able to put yourself in the shoes of other people, you know? And if we're able to do that, then we're always able to be patient with, with others, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's been it's been a long process, even a fight for myself to learn how to do that over the years. You know what I mean? Um, but usually that that that's the, the one of the main things. You know, I can't say there's one main thing because a lot of it's just not giving up, not throwing in the towel, and life in general. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people want to give up. Some commit suicide. Some some do some other. You know what I mean? Terrible things all because they just haven't been able to persevere. Whatever it is that they're going through. Um, and the main thing is just not giving up, you know, rolling with the punches and keep pushing, keep going forward. Yeah, excellent. It's a very good advice, you know. And that is, um, you know, that is one of the things that I personally sort of admire about you, Cyrus, a lot, is that you, um, 
I don't want to put it into words, but you understand the, you know, the depth of, of the meaning of some of what you do in terms of its influence on people. And, and that's a bit off topic, but I just want to say that, you know. Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, moving on with that, I mean, let's talk about the, the Lethway um, side of things, you know, it's, it's quite an exciting um, side of it. I mean, obviously, you know, you were the first foreign opponent um, to defeat a Lethway uh, champion in uh, Myanmar, and you uh, obviously made that happen, you made history um, with that. But I mean, let's go back to the beginning. I mean, in the beginning, what um, actually drew you to Lethway? I mean, obviously, it's an incredibly brutal sport. Um, but also an incredibly beautiful sport in, um, you know, in the martial arts sense, in the grace, the precision, and so forth. But um, what actually, yeah, well, like I say, what actually drew you to it? How did you first get into it? Uh, okay, so for me, the first thing that drew me into Lithway <laughs> was actually just an associate of mine asking me to do a Lithway fight, which he didn't even call it Lithway. He just said it was bare knuckle. I had no idea what Lithway was at the time. Um, the organizers of the fight, I didn't know them. I didn't really know the guy that offered me the fight. But we had uh, crossed paths a couple times, just fighting in the circuits of Thailand. And um, so I agreed to do the fight. I fought uh, Saw Man, my very first fight. Um, and uh, I, I knew that headbutts were uh, legal at the time. But uh, the fight that Saw Man and myself were, were uh, set to do in the press conference, they said that there would be no headbutts because they didn't feel that I would be able to, to sustain the headbutts and keep fighting, and, you know what I mean, and put on a good performance or a decent performance because they didn't expect me to win, you know. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, that's pretty much what drew me in the left way. It was just my, my, my uh, associate, who's now a friend now, um, he offered me the fight, and that's what got me started. Mm. And the other thing with that is obviously, um, obviously you've got a lot of fight experience, and we, you know we've touched on the different titles and, and the hundred important fights and so on and so forth. But still, I mean, adapting to um, you know a fight as as tough as that. What what I'm saying is, I mean, you're going into a left way fight, and it, it's got a lot of hype around it. It's got a lot of um, you know that quality of like, oh, you know, can you actually do this? How did you respond to adapting to? Uh, number one, adapting to the fighting style, obviously, you know, including uh, headbutts in, in there and things like that. But also, how did you, you know, mentally prepare um, to go into a fight of that magnitude? I mean, as, as I mentioned, you know, you went into your opponent's backyard. I mean, you went into his, you know, into his um, uh, home country, basically, and everything like that. So how did you ad sort of mentally prepare for that whole process, basically? Um, so for me... Preparing for, for that fight or, or any fight has it's pretty much been the same. I mean, there's certain steps that I take, and I don't always follow them in the same order, but, uh, I mean, I, I meditate on a, on a weekly basis, maybe a few times a week. Um, and then from there, right before the fight, I, I'm zoning out, and I zone out to the point to where nothing exists but those moments, you know? Um, it's almost like a possession. I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of – moments in the ring where I can't remember or recollect what happened, you know, as if I was possessed. Um, and not saying that it's like this uh, dark magic or something like that. You know what I mean? That I, that I practice anything like that, but I zone out to a point to where like, I'm just all instinctive, you know, everything's now instinct, you know? Um, and that's pretty much what it is. Hey, yeah, it makes it's, it's interesting insight into it like that, which does lead me to obviously, with Lethway, um, well, I'll say in that also with Muay Thai, with a lot of the Asian, um, you know, traditional fighting styles, basically, you know, they have thousands of years of history, a lot of them. Uh, you know, they have a lot of uh, cultural traditions, uh, spiritual traditions and so forth attached uh, to them, Pro you know, probably more, I would say, than, than, you know, the certain Western styles. You know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, because uh, you, you'll know more about this than me, but I've come across uh, that there's certain rituals to be performed before a left way fight and there's certain spiritual traditions. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Did you, you, first of all, do you take part in them? Do you think they enhance, um, you know, your performance? What are your overall um, thoughts on that sort of side of it, basically? Um, my, overall, my overall thoughts on uh, 
the the rituals why crew or dances before the fights are i mean they're good uh they can help further push you into that moment you know because what you're doing does pertain to what you're about to do you know and um i mean i feel like they can be good now for some fighters even myself in the beginning of my career after just turning pro i wouldn't do a wide crew or ram Mui before the fight i maybe seal the ring and after that i stand in my corner and stay focused upon my opponent and what it was i had to do to my opponent um after becoming more experienced i started to participate in in the uh beginning ceremonies or rituals like wide crew and ram Mui. It's fascinating to hear from from that side, and the other thing is obviously fighting because um, I, I know, like you said, you know, you you fought all over the world, but but particularly on the on the eastern um, side of things, like I mentioned, there's obviously certain um, cultural differences with fighting. There's um, certain you know ideas they have of the meaning uh, behind it. I mean, do you, are you sort of drawn to? Um, you know some of the spiritual traditions, some of that side of it, with with martial arts, or and I know when we talked about this before, you mentioned that it's not really religious or anything like that, but you you mentioned there are certain spiritual things like meditation. Uh, mm-hmm. What aspect of that are you sort of uh, drawn to, and you know what are your thoughts on on that side of things with fighting? Um, well, I, I, I'm drawn to the spiritual aspect of everything because my own personal belief, which I feel is a fact of the universe and of everyone, is that we are the spirit within the body, you know? And when we're having an experience that we get to see through these two eyes, and um, the spirit is a part of everything, you know? Everything spiritual, unless a person just chooses to make everything not spiritual, you know? Um, so for me, we have to learn to... Uh, kind of separate ourselves from the body in the sense of training our mind which pertains more so, more so to the spirit you know what I mean and the brain to the body you know the mind is to the spirit which the brain is to the body so we have to train our mind more I mean once we can make that that our mind like titanium then anything that happens to the body is just kind of happening to the body you know like okay the body feels pain it's not the spirit but that feels this pain it's the body you know and things like that you know what I'm saying yeah, uh, yeah, it's I, I the body that's tiring. You know what I mean? It's the body that's tiring, not my mind. You know what I mean? Like my mind can keep going, so I can push my body further. You know, and that's kind of how I, that's how I live my life and how I've trained throughout the years to be able to push myself a lot harder than most people could. That's an interesting insight into the mental side of it. I mean, personally, I um, well, as I've also mentioned to you before, you know, I um, follow some similar principles in a way, even um, so, I, I get where you're coming from. So the other thing that sort of surprised me is um, obviously I followed your career uh, for a while anyway, but when that, one of the things that surprises me about left wave fights, and it surprised me more when I was researching for this, is some of the um, rule changes that happen. And what I mean by that is, as I know that goes on, but like you've been asked to fight extra rounds, um, mm-hmm. I think in, in um, you know, one or two fights there's been different things. And, and I, I was aware you know, the in left way that goes on. To be honest, I wasn't aware that it had happened uh, to you, you know, in some of the circumstances that it has until more recently. But let's talk about that. I mean, did some of the, the differences surprise you? I mean, in left way, you've got things, you know, knocking opponents out twice and, you've, and you know, you've you got things that just don't happen in sort of Western fights, you know, in boxing or MMA or whatever. So how did you adapt to, um, to that side of things, basically, to some of the, some of the differences there with the rules? Um, adapting to, to, to the changes or the differences in the rules. I mean, wasn't just the physical training, but again, it goes back to just the whole mental aspect of accepting what is in the moment. You know what I mean? Um, I, I remember fighting a, a lift away extreme fight when they had the extra two, five minute rounds after the five, three minute rounds. Um, there was a little bit of confusion of how those rounds were start i didn't know that they would start the way that they did i thought that the round would end and then we start the extra two rounds but the round just continued and then the the the, the first of the two five minute rounds started so that caused us some confusion um and a lot of the spectators i think didn't know that there was going to be extra rounds 
and they were kind of upset because they wanted that fight to just be over. They were like, okay, it's a draw. Just, okay, it's finished. These guys are beaten and battered. Just let them, you know what I mean? Let them go on their way. But um, for myself, it was no no big issue. Um, like I said, I just roll with the punches, man, and keep going. Talk about um, in, in left way, um, you know, the two world title wins themselves. Uh, and I know there was obviously time between them uh, and everything like that, but I'm, I'm grouping them together, obviously, as the two, um, you know, biggest achievements in the sport. Let's walk, let's just, just for people watching, just talk us through um, both world title fights, you know, uh, in left way, you know, what you felt, what you experienced, uh, who you fought, and just uh, anything you want to say about it, really. Just a little insight into, into um, both world title fights, please. Um, yeah. Um, so the first world title fight, I was fighting, uh, Foss Sawman. Um, this was back in 2010. There were no foreigners, uh, as top competitors in Lithuania at all at that time. Um, or no Westerners anyway. There were some ties that had went and done some, some, some pretty amazing things, but there were no Westerners that had, uh, reached the top of the sport at that time. Um, I fought saw a man, uh, like I said, in the press conference, they said no headbutts. We want the fight to, you know what I mean? Last a few rounds, at least, you know, um, the organizers of the fight at that time, they asked me, they asked me if I, uh, if I was afraid, they asked me if I was afraid and, um, like, if I was ready to fight, you know, that was pretty new to me because I had never been asked if I was afraid before a fight. And I'm like, yeah, like, I mean, it's a fight, you know, I'm going to go out, do my best, and I'll leave it at that, you know. Um, so the fight start, and I don't I don't really remember much of the fight myself, but I watched it a couple times. Um, and I remember, I do remember uh, him headbutting me intentionally, and I'm saying, okay, so th there will be headbutts. And, and I headbutt him back. But at the time, I had never trained anything in left way. So I, I didn't know what I was doing with headbutts. So I'm butting it with my, my jaw bones and my, my cheeks. I'm, I'm just hitting him with anything on my face, you know, because I, I, I let my, uh, I guess my, the, my emotions get the better of me at that time. I calmed down and um, then I started to zone out and things started to go my way. Um, I ended up knocking him out with the elbow. He was he was going to do a flying headbutt. I knocked him out with the elbow. He ran into my elbow with the flying headbutt. He fell down on his face. He woke up pretty fast after his uh, corner called a timeout because you know you get that one five minute timeout. His corner called a timeout and um, he continued, but uh, sort of lost face because he stuck his head out of the ropes one time. He would kind of fall on the ground before I could hit him and things like that. So I couldn't really finish the fight. And I was awarded the title after the fight had ended. Um, but kind of behind closed doors, but they gave me the title. They felt I earned it anyway. So. Mm. Yes, it's a good insight into, um, you know, into what it's like to have an experience like that. Because obviously I know this, you know, the sport of left way is growing. Obviously it's massive in Asia anyway, but I know it's growing in the West. And, uh, and there's certain people like, uh, like Dave Leduc, who um, obviously are in a way, you know, doing a, doing a bit good work to grow it. Um, which actually that does lead me to, uh, to Dave Leduc actually, which is one other fight I'd like to talk about. The reason I mentioned that one is obviously, you know, he's um, very popular, he's made a good name for himself. Uh, you know, in the sport of left way and, you know, fair play to him. You fought him to a draw, um, you know, under, under traditional rules. What was your fight with him, uh, with David Duck actually like? How did that sort of go down? Um, when I fought David Duke, um, this was, I think, 2017, so a few years ago. Uh, it was interesting. Um, I wasn't 100%. Uh, a lot of people know that I had an MRI done on my ankle, sort of at the bottom of my 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 shin bone or tibia. I had a a chip fracture down there. Um, we postponed the fight. The fight. Uh, I didn't get the the MRI until after the fight, I think, or or, or something. I can't remember exactly, but I know I was kind of pressured into the fight because he had some sort of, and I say he because 
it was some sort of made up magazine that was kind of saying that, oh, um, whenever Cyrus Washington is ready and he hasn't broken a nail, uh, we guess we'll get to see this fight, you know? And I'm like, what the, f like, 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 what do you mean, man? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I fight anybody, anywhere, anytime, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm gonna set it up. Um, so I kind of, I guess, again, allow my emotion to get the better to me. And instead of me saying, hey, let's hold off another six months, let my leg heal, I just took the fight. And I fought him. I ended up using a lot of footwork. Uh, some people can't even call it running if they want. Um, I didn't kick with my right leg, but once during that fight, because that's the leg that was injured or the ankle that was injured, um, I fought him left-handed a lot, which I can fight left-handed, but I prefer to have two legs when I fight. Um, no excuses. I, I, I uh, give him his draw. He didn't beat me. He was in no fucking way near beating me, um, even though there was a time I call from the headbutt. It was just me not uh, being 100%. Therefore, I didn't really believe in my abilities at that time. Um, they can set it up whenever they want, and I'll definitely put on a way better show than that, for sure. Dave LaDuke wasn't even around when I won my first title, and I don't even think he was fighting when I won the second one. You know what I mean? Um I guess he's done more so with social media and social media being bigger to kind of promote it. Um, when I was winning my title, social media wasn't what it is now. So there was no way for me to really promote them the way that, the way that he, he's doing it now. You know what I'm saying? Not to take anything away from him, but for him to walk around and say that he's the best foreigner or Westerner, it's kind of bullshit because he never beat me. He was like, he never even knocked me out, you know what I mean? For me to wake up or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? I don't even remember him really knocking out his opponents, to be honest, you know? And again, not to take anything away from him, but people should call it how they see it, you know what I mean? Like, I put my opponents to sleep for nearly an hour, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were in comatose, in a coma, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's all I got to say about that, Liam. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. It's, I mean, like I say, it's good to hear that side of it because obviously, you know, you don't always get that side of it just by watching the fight or just by, you know, even um, watching the press conference. You don't always hear, you know, what the fight went through. And obviously you've had time to reflect and things have changed since then. So it's a good it's a good thing. And that's the reason I brought that up, really, is because, I, you know, I do feel that he's, um, well, marketed himself very, very well, um, yeah, yeah. which is fair, you know. But then obviously you were the first and you're the sort of the veteran of, of, of this game, which is why I'm sort of bringing that together. So, you know. So uh, moving on from that, I mean, one of the things um, that I'd like to talk about here is obviously you're very driven to compete in, uh, obviously, fights at the highest level, you know, all over the world. Uh, I mean, when we talked before, you mentioned about like Australia and you've obviously Thailand, you mentioned all, all these places um, and, and for many years now. But what personally drives you? Uh, what motivates you? And I know fighters want to be champion and that's cool. But for some people, it's money. Some people, it's fame. Some people, it's, you know what I mean? It's just different, different things make different people tick. So for you personally, um, what, what is like the fundamental um, reason why? What is, what is your why? Uh, that's what I'm asking, basically. Um, well, Liam, I don't have, I guess, just one why. Um, but one of those whys would definitely be to inspire my children my loved ones, those close to me, to just not give up. Not give up on what you know you can do, you know? Like, if you believe in anything in this world, you damn sure need to believe in yourself, you know? If you can't believe in yourself, you can't really believe in anything else. It's just like it's just like love, you know? If you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. Um, definitely inspiring, like my children and loved ones, and just anybody that's willing to take a look at what I do and what I've done. What, do I, what I've experienced throughout my life and where I am now, you know. Um, and another thing, uh, self-expression for myself. You know, I have something inside of me um, that just isn't ready to be finished with what I'm doing, you know. Um, I don't, something inside of me say, hey, your best, your best hasn't been shown yet, you know. You haven't displayed your best yet. Keep pushing. And I'm actually... Uh, making a venture into professional boxing. Um, just actually had my first sparring last weekend. 
with a, with a big group of some Olympic uh, trial athletes and, and things like that, that box. Um, I did really well. I'm looking forward to things getting back flowing in the economy and around the world so I can I can get to box. Hopefully you'll interview me about that in a couple of years too. I hope so. I hope so. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do a lot with the boxing, as you know, and it would be, yeah, be great to, uh, I look forward to then based on that to follow in that side of, of your career as well. Um, so that's good sure. stuff. But that's sort of the future future plan then, is it to get into uh, get into boxing? Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what, Liam? Um, after last weekend, and even before last weekend, it, it, it's like a really good fit, you know? Like, it comes so natural to me. And I started with boxing before I got into traditional martial arts intensively, you know? Um, before I started Taekwondo when I was 10, I was already boxing around 8, 9 with, with my uncles and at the community center. Um and then I got into Taekwondo. I mean, before boxing, I was doing a little Kimbo karate, but it, it wasn't intensively. It was every once in a while with my mom's friend, with my mom's and things like that, you know? Brilliant. There's something else I'd like to touch on here. Um, I mean, it is only a few more things now, but, but one of them is um, when I was researching this, I, I found something uh, I didn't know. And I actually found uh, a, a GoFundMe page saying that you had been shot um, in the leg. Now, um, you know, I, and I found that, and to be honest, I didn't know about that. I mean, even when I was following your fights and, and um, you know, all the rest of it. So um, the reason I bring that up is not just to talk about being shot and that's right, but obviously the fact that you bounce back from, uh, from adversity there, really, from, you know, from, from something very serious. Uh, and that's, that's the reason I'm bringing that into it. And so, but to start with, I mean, um, what actually happened um in in that situation i mean you know what what actually went down on on that night when when you were shot um well the night i was shot i was just working security um i had taken on the security job working inside the club so i wasn't armed there were there weren't supposed to be anybody in the club with arms or any guns or anything like that um I hadn't fought in a little while. Um, four of my fights had got canceled because opponents backing out. You know, I won't say their names or anything like that, but it was just like, hey, man, why are you backing out? You asked to fight me two times. You asked to fight me, and then the fight's coming up, and you back out. Anyway, um, so I was in the club working security, and uh, there had been a couple guys getting into an altercation that night. We broke them up once already, um, and they got into an altercation again. I ran over to break him up. Some guy starts shooting. Um, he starts shooting. I run off the other direction. And then my leg gives out. Um, what I didn't realize was that I hadn't been shot in the leg at all. One of the bullets had went through my leg. I had got shot in the stomach, um, which by the grace of God, it didn't hit my spinal cord, you know what I mean, and things like that because of the way it went in and the way it exited. So it went through one side of my stomach on the left side and went out my right leg. Um, the other bullet uh, grazed me deep enough to, uh, I guess, kind of uh, hurt or, or destroy part of my femoral artery. Um, so while I was laying on the floor, my leg was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger from the eternal bleeding. Um, again, by the grace of God, I didn't, I didn't bleed out. Um, Everyone was kind of panicking and things like that. I had to, I had to, I think I snatched the girl's phone to call the police because she was just kind of in shock, you know. Um, I'm looking over my shoulder to see if this guy's coming to finish me off. Um, so I'm kind of bracing myself for that. I don't, I don't know, I'm just kind of like all over the place while I'm on the floor, floor on my back. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. So it hit my femoral artery, my femoral nerve as well. So my leg didn't work for a while. Um, I kind of forced myself to walk, kind of shut myself off. Um, other than my children being there to, you know what I mean, help me and motivate me, but they didn't understand the extent or the extent to what had happened. Um, it was pretty much something that I, I dealt with and went through on my own, you know. Um, and it's made me a stronger person in so many ways. It's made me a more patient person in so many ways. It's made me just a better person in a lot of ways. And I, I know that a lot of people are um, 
kind of against the whole, not necessarily against it. They just don't understand why God would do something like that to get your attention. But I truly believe that God did that to get my attention, you know, because I was probably, or I was just not doing a lot of things the way that the Lord would prefer or the way the source, the universe, whatever you want to call it, would prefer me to do them. And um, so I changed them and things are, are a lot better now. For sure. Brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing is obviously, you know, coming through something like that is, uh, is amazing to, you know, to bounce back from it for, to start with, never mind, uh, you know, any of the other aspects and coming sort of face to face with, uh, well, with, with death, basically. I mean, it's, you know, it's something, uh, it's quite something to overcome. The one thing yes, I do yes. want to, I do want to touch on with Rato Cyrus is obviously, do you feel, you know, you mentioned that it's sort of changed your attitude and it's changed aspects of your life which is which is which is great in itself and i also believe you know that these things happen for a reason and, and whatnot but um even when they seem negative at the time but do you think it it's sort of um benefited your fighting which is the other which is the one other thing do you think that it's sort of given you um you know any kind of mental edge there or what i mean by that is having faith you know having faced death i mean you know you're a pretty brave guy anyway going into like uh, Myanmar and going into opponents' backyards and doing this, that, and the other. But do you think it's added to um, anything in the ring, or do you think it hasn't really made a difference there? Um, you know what? Uh, definitely, Liam. It's definitely added. Um, it's just made me, yeah, a lot stronger, a lot tougher. Um, you know what? Um, so I have this 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 graft in my leg. If this graft doesn't work out and I don't get to the hospital soon enough, then then I die, you know. Um, the nerves in my leg still don't function at 100%. Um, so, you know, what? It, it, it forces me to push harder in every way. You're right. It's, it's made me a lot stronger. Um, even though my leg doesn't work the way that it, it should work, I guess, or the way that it did work, I um, – still find a way to be faster than I used to be, you know, especially with boxing. Um, and um, even though I know that this uh, this graft could get clogged up or whatever at any time and it could cause a, 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 um, whatever to go to my heart, I forget how they call it, but um, this just made me a better person, man, not to dwell on, on the negative stuff in any sort of way, you know what I mean? Um, it's made me a better person, a stronger person, and, and a stronger and better fighter for sure. Definitely. My mind's a lot stronger. Yeah, I can understand. I can understand. It's it's good to, um, I mean, to be honest, that's one of the main things about this video that, that I'm aiming for is, is, you know, how to turn negatives into positives. And obviously people seeing that will hopefully, um, y you know, take that lesson from you and sort of start to apply it in their own lives. That may be something that appears to be bad uh, and, you know, and it sure is, you know, pretty bad, but it's got some good sides to it, you know. Um, and that's one of the things which does lead me to um, one other thing that, that I'd, I'd really love to talk about. And that is um, if you had to give advice to people who wanted to succeed in life, you know, people who want to be successful, um, it, you know, it can be in fighting. I mean, it can be in any type of combat uh, sports, but also, but just, the, you know, the principle of wanting, you know, having ambition, wanting to make something of yourself and so forth. You know, if you had advice, given everything that you've accomplished, to say to, uh, you know, people watching this now, what would you actually say to them? Uh, what would be the advice, you, you know, that you would give, basically? Um, the number one thing that I would say to them as advice is to uh, always be honest with yourself. Sit down, spend time alone and self-reflect. See what it is that you need to work on as being a better person, better athlete, or whatever your endeavor may be, and work on it. Like, put your energy into that. Um, be patient with yourself as well. Don't allow frustration to cloud your, your vision or, or, or your, your process or progress. You know, trust the process. There will be some, some falls and some negatives during the process, but keep pushing forward anyway. It's all a part of the process, you know? Um, Definitely do that and, and, and don't waste energy with frustration at all because frustration is just a waste of energy. Be patient, breathe, self-reflect, and, and just keep pushing forward. Only, like I said, there's only, only a couple more uh, a couple more things now on the same sort of topic. Um, and they're actually flip sides of the same 
uh, thing. And what I mean by that is, first of all, I'd like to talk about um, the the proudest moments of your career. And the reason I say that is I know we've talked about winning the world titles and we've talked about these things, but I never assume that that in itself is, is the proudest moment because, you know, there could be a particularly tough fight. There could be, a, um, you know, a particular challenge. It could be, you know, overcoming um, overcoming the shooting. Um, so I'd like to talk about for you what, what in your career when you look back so far, and I know there's more to go, but when you look back so far, you know, what the, you know, what you're most proud of basically, you know, what you look back and I just think, yeah, you know, that was the, that was the one. Maybe there's not just one thing, maybe there's more than one, but I'm just opening that up um, for you basically. Um, you know what, Liam, to be honest, and it's just the type of person that I am and the way that I am with myself, I don't really have a proudest moment at all whatsoever. Not yet, you know, once I've, once I've sat down and I've, um, taking the gloves off, I guess, and hung them up, which I don't see myself doing ever. But once I've done that, and I can actually sit down and just kind of self-reflect and look at everything that I've done and been able to endure, um, then I'll definitely be able to answer that question. But if, as of right now, I don't, I don't, I don't have a proudest moment. That's fair enough. Con you know, continuous improvement, which is, which is always, uh, always good. And then the flip side of that question, because remember I said there's, there's two sides is yes, obviously regrets which is obviously something i want to touch on because and the reason i bring that up is because it, obviously in life you know they say that hindsight is uh 2020 I, I believe is the phrase for it in other words when you look back things can be clearer good and bad um and that's one the one thing i'd like to bring into this is is there anything you would change first of all but also as well as anything you would change um what lessons, assuming there is anything, what lessons have you have you taken from uh, those experiences? So I know that's a, a double-sided question, but is there anything you would change in your career? Any any regrets? Anything, anything like that? Um, I mean, I would definitely, uh, I would have definitely, I guess, fought harder some fights and I mean some fights where I know the decision was fair and it didn't go my way um outside of my career um I was married at one time I probably should have waited waited to get married you know what I mean a little later um just because being a young guy and not knowing how to yet be patient for a woman you know what I mean um would have probably helped me to keep a more clear mind when I did have fights coming up and things like that, you know, um, to kind of keep some of the drama at bay. You know I mean, not to throw anything at her, you know what I'm saying? It was on me. I should have waited until I was more ready. Um, but, but those would be the two, the two main things, you know. There's no fight or anything in particular that I feel like I, I, I would have done anything different other than uh, be able to zone out and go in that, that kind of instinctive mode where I'm just fighting on all instinct, you know. That's what I would prefer to do in all my fights, you know. Yeah, I understand you, you live and learn, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, particularly with the, with the woman thing, man, I've, I've been there and done it. I mean, I haven't been married, actually, but I know what you mean by the, by the principle of, of what you're saying there. But, um, and then, you know, from the experiences, I'm actually going to open that up bigger, because I know I said, uh, I know I said what you've learned from your regrets, but I'm going to open that up bigger. I mean, what, what would you say um, are some of the biggest, or the main, or not necessarily the biggest, but the most important lessons um, that you've learned from your career, and I'm sure you've learned a lot, and I'm sure, and you mentioned earlier about becoming a better person, and you mentioned that um, when we spoke before as well. But I mean, if there's just, and I know there's probably a lot, and that's cool, but if there's like just one or two things that you've really, uh, you know, really gained from from fighting and from from you know competing at the highest level so far um, as a person, what would that be, or what would they be? Uh um what is the main things ways in which you've improved as a as a person it doesn't have to be one thing i mean i'm not i'm not saying it's like a, it's like a sort of set in stone just uh, i'm basically just asking what are some of your uh favorite things that, that you've gained from um you know from competing at the highest level basically if that makes sense um 
the I guess the main thing would be just believing believing in myself, you know, just believing in myself, learning how to believe in myself no matter what those outside of me believe or have to say about myself, you know. Um, I um, yeah, I mean that would be the main thing. The main thing that comes to mind from competing at the highest level and, and moving around the world. Um, Definitely believing in myself. Uh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's all advice, you know, given everything you've, given everything you've done there. Um, it's, it's fantastic. I actually, I realized I missed um, one question that I actually wanted to wanted to ask. So I know I said that was the last one, but I, I didn't mean to. But I missed. No, no problem. But no if problem. I ask, yeah, one more. is actually, um, I forgot to ask one of the things earlier was about the training uh, aspect of you know, the type of competition that, that you do. And what I mean by that is, again, I'm bringing the, the East um, versus West thing into it again, you know. But obviously you've done different types of training and, and obviously Muay Thai with the left way. Uh, I've got no idea really what training for left way is, is actually like, even though I follow the fights. Um, so I'm just going to talk about a, a little overview of, um, of some of the different training that you've done. Um, and that was what I forgot to ask earlier. So, yeah, can we, can we just talk a little bit, little bit about that? Um, so I, I mean, I've trained in various martial arts. Um, wow, I mean, quite a few martial arts now. I'm even training more martial arts as we speak. Um, but I've trained in Taekwondo, Kempo, Karate, Muay Thai, um, some Lithway. Um, Lithway isn't very different than uh, Kun Khmer or Muay Thai. They're all they all have slight differences, but they're pretty much all the, the same. Not exactly, you know what I mean? They still have their slight differences. Um, but, I mean, I'm doing some Silat right now, a uh, little Capoeira. Um, I don't know if you've heard of 52 Blocks before. I'm learning uh, some of that. No, well, that's a new one. That's a new one on yeah. me. Uh, YouTube, look it up on YouTube when you can. I'm, I'm learning some of that. And just expanding my martial arts uh, background, as well as I'm a blue belt and um, BJJ as well. Okay, I just wanted to touch on that because, um, well, just because it's another insight into it, into that side of things, and it it, it does lead me to because uh, I keep going on and on. I mean, there's so much. I, this this will be the last one, I, I promise. But is there, um, you know, when you fought in in Myanmar, when you fought it, obviously in the left way and everything, what is the atmosphere like in in the arena? Um, in terms of, or in, actually more than that, when I mean, when you turn up in the country to, to fight in, you know, their traditional sport, their uh, absolute, you know, national pride and joy, basically, how did they receive you? And then we're in the country, and then when you actually arrived into the into the ring to fight, and the crowds going, and I've seen the videos. I mean, it looks very very high energy in in some of these. But what uh, what sort of what's that whole experience like? Um. Arriving in the country for me, the experience was good. I mean, the people were nice. Uh, the people were nice. Um, I like the food. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's a nice place from what I see or from what I've seen. I've heard some stories, but I mean, we hear stories about nearly or almost everywhere in the world where, where you hear about terrorism, things like that. You know, I didn't experience anything like that while I was there. Getting to the stadium in the arena, it was pretty much the same thing, you know. Um, I've had some, I've had a fight where they weren't very happy and uh, they threw some bottles and some other things like that in the ring. But um, other than that one experience, um, yeah, I mean, it was all good though, for sure. Definitely very high energy, almost electric, you know what I mean? Like the people love, they love their art, they love that sport. Brilliant, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, that's all it was. I just, it just came to me. I just wondered if it was different to, different to Western fights in, from a certain perspective, because it, it does seem to be... Um, it yes, is, it is. Yeah. No, it's the, the, the crowd is a lot more involved, even in Thailand, you know? Even in Thailand, the crowd is a lot more involved in the, in the fight, for sure. They're, they're like, oh, oh, everybody is, you know? Versus in, in America, people are more just kind of watching. Maybe they'll clap or something like that, you know? Which, I mean, it's fine. I mean, both are fine. They're just different. Yeah, brilliant. Well, to be honest, Cyrus, I mean, that's, you know, that's everything, um, that's everything I wanted to talk about. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a really, really uh, fantastic insight into 
multiple aspects, you know, your life, your career, your, you know, your mindset. Uh, and like I said to you before, I mean, my hope is that this will be inspiration for people, um, you know, for the youth of today and for, well, for anyone really, anyone who, who needs um, some inspiration in their lives. Uh, and I'm hoping this will provide that as well as, um, you know, being an insight into the physical side of, of combat as well. So hopefully these cover both sides. But before we, uh, you know, before we wrap this one up, uh, I'd like to ask you, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, first of all, is there anything, uh, anything more you'd like to talk about? And if, if so, we can, if not, is there anything you'd like to say to, uh, you know, your fans, to uh, anyone watching this, just anything at all? Or are you, are you pretty good? Um, no, I mean, I'm pretty good as far as having anything else to say or talk about. Um, but one thing I will say as far as uh, some of the things that I'm doing, um, you can definitely find me on Instagram, Black Dynamite Muay Thai, uh, Twitter, Black Dynamite Muay Thai, or Black Dynamite MT. They're both Black Dynamite MT. But um, I have a website. I'm, um, I've am i invented a, uh, a mobile striking bag for those that don't have room in their garage or, or at their home to hang a bag. They can just wrap this bag around the tree, strap it on, and um, they can kind of go to work. Um, that is available in two weeks um and you can purchase it on unbreakable pain is my teacher dot com brilliant okay along with some other stuff there's like other stuff too but that's the main thing as well as I, i've written two books as well I, I always forget to tell people that i've written two books they should be published within the next couple months two interesting books they're really interesting <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they are, sir. I'm sure they are. I've seen if you've brought that into it, which is which I didn't. I had no idea about that, so I'm glad you said. Um, what what's the score there? I mean, what could you give us a little sneak peek about what they what they're about? I'm um, sure, definitely one. I will definitely. Um, so the one, <laughs> the one I named it. Uh, well, I named it intuition. You know, I'm a big believer in intuition. Um, being the sixth sense, almost, or, or, or our closest, our closest uh, way or, or, or connection to God, um, and, and our intuition can aid us in anything we do. You know what I mean? Intuition is almost like that first mind, like that first thought that you have that you didn't follow, and you go back, and you're looking like, wow, I should listen to my first mind, you know? Um, it talks about that a lot, you know, it talks about that, not even only in the sense of fighting, but just in life, you know, and how it can help us to become better, things like that. Brilliant. I love it. I, I absolutely, I love, uh, I love um, genuinely that you're getting that out there um, for people because, well, I mean, it's like I said to you, when, you, you know, even when we were sort of talking and planning this, I mean, you know, the world needs more uh, of that kind of thing. I mean, it needs more wisdom um in that sense and, I, and i'm not talking about any type of dogma or any type of you know that type i'm just talking about general you know wisdom that people have gained from um you know from life experience and and, and it's one of the things because I, I even when i looked on your twitter and stuff man i love some of the um you know some of the posts that you put up there on instagram and you know some of the inspirational some of the motivational spiritual whatever you want to call it the stuff you, you know you put out there is, uh, is fantastic so um Yes, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. I'm glad. I'm glad you give that a mention, Cyrus, because it um, it did. That. No, I so, so thank you, um, Cyrus, for your time today, uh, talking thank to me. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel, and there'll be more videos coming soon.